Okay, I have a problem right here. I'm gonna do it three ways. Three variations of this problem. So I have a block with a mass m, and it's on this incline that has an angle theta above the horizontal. And I'm gonna do this the first case. I wanna find out the acceleration of this block with no friction. There's no friction. It's a perfectly 100% frictionless surface. There's no friction. Okay. So the first thing I wanna do is draw the forces on this diagram. So here I have the gravitational force, mg, and then I have the normal force. If I, and the normal force on this, normal means perpendicular. It's perpendicular to the surface. Since this surface is this way, it has to be that way, perpendicular. Okay, that's one of the mistakes I see a lot of people make. They want to put the normal force going straight up. Normal force is normal, not straight up. There's two normal force mistakes. Normal one, normal force is straight up. Two, is that they put they say normal force is equal to the weight. Both of those are not true in this case. You can see if those are the only two forces, there's no way they can add up to zero. There's no way this block can be at rest. There's no way those two forces can add up to zero because they're in different directions. So how do I find the acceleration? If I did this, that is my x and y axis, then I'm going to have a component of the normal force in both the x and the y direction. And so you'll get an acceleration in both the x and the y direction. And it'd be a little complicated. If I know that this block doesn't accelerate this way because it stays on the plane, then I can say this is my x direction. This is my y direction. And so now I only have an acceleration in the x direction. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Now there is one geometrical trick, and that is to play around with these angles. If that angle is theta, you should be able to show yourself that this angle is also theta. So now I can say some of the forces in the y direction is going to be n minus mg cosine theta. Okay, so notice here, in the y direction, there's a component of the gravitational force. It's this part right here. That's the adjacent side of that triangle, and that's the opposite side, so I'd use cosine. Okay, and this is going to be equal to zero. But that's not actually that useful. Uh, but I'm going to solve it anyway, so let's say n equals mg cosine theta. But that doesn't give me the acceleration. Now in the x direction, I get only one force is in the x direction, and that's this component of the gravitational force. That's the opposite side of this triangle. So I get mg sine theta equals ma. Now I can solve for a, divide both sides by the mass, and I get a equals g sine theta. That's my acceleration down the plane. I'm going to write it up here. That's the number one way I did it. Number two, change the problem. Um, I'm going to leave that equation like that. But now there's friction. Now there's a, it's sliding down the plane, and there's a, uh, it's sliding, so there's a frictional force like that. It's kinetic friction. So my y equation is the same because the frictional force is parallel to the surface. So it doesn't affect the y direction. That's the same. But now my x looks like this. I have mg sine theta. That's my x component of the gravitational force minus the frictional force equals ma. And now I can use my model for friction. My model says that the friction, this kinetic friction force is going to be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. That's the rule. Not the weight. Not the weight. The normal force. But you see here, the normal force is not equal to the weight. Okay, so that's actually going to be the frictional force going to be mu k times mg cosine theta. So if I put this value in here, I get mg sine theta minus mu k mg cosine theta equals ma. I can divide both sides by m, 
and I get an expression for a, I get 2 a equals, uh, I'm actually going to factor out a g just because I want to. g sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. Which one's greater? Is it a, you have a greater acceleration with or without friction? Well, if the angle is less than 90 degrees, this is going to be a positive value. I'm going to subtract off that positive value from my sine theta. So sine theta minus this thing is going to be smaller than sine theta. So this is going to be a smaller acceleration than that. That's what we thought, right? Okay. That was number two. Number three. This one's kind of cool. What if I took that block and I pushed it up the plane? So now, I, after I push it, it's sliding up the plane without my hand, and it's moving up. It's going to be slowing down. Okay? In the case without friction, that's still the acceleration. It doesn't matter. But with friction, it does matter. Because with friction, if it's moving up the plane, friction opposes relative motion. So if this is moving up, then this would be like this. Now the friction force is pointing down because the block's moving up. This equation is still the same. This equation is not. What needs to change in this equation? Yes, this is wrong. It's not in the negative x direction, it's in the positive. What changes here? Nothing. What changes here? Nothing. What changes here? Well. I change that positive, this is positive too. So now if I do the same solution, I get 3a equals g sine theta plus mu k cosine theta. So now I'm adding those together. Now the acceleration is greater than going down the plane. It's greater than with no friction. So sliding up the plane, it's accelerating that way, so that means it slows down, but it's going to slow down more with friction than it would without friction, which that kind of makes sense. Okay, So those are the three ways I can modify this block on a plane for you, with friction. You're welcome.